I'm going to do a basic tutorial on food webs. Um, it's at the heart of how energy moves through ecosystems. And we'll start with a food chain. And remember, we're following the energy. So when the grasshopper eats the grass, make sure that your arrows are pointing in the correct direction. So what I mean by that, when you're making a food web, you're, you're just showing the transfer of energy. So the energy goes from the grass to the grasshopper. When the grasshopper is eaten by the frog, the energy stored in that grasshopper goes to the frog. The frog's energy is transferred to the snake when the snake eats the frog. And then when the hawk eats the snake, the arrows always point towards what's doing the eating because it's showing how the energy goes. So when you eat chicken, the energy, the calories in that chicken are going to you. So the arrows will be pointing at you. It's one of the most common mistakes that I see. Now we're going to divide the food chain into two groups. Uh, producers are organisms that make their own food, usually through photosynthesis. So in this case, it's going to be grass. Everything else then is a consumer. So the grass doesn't have to go eat its food or get its food. It makes its own food through photosynthesis. The grasshopper has to eat the grass. Everything else has to eat, well, something that ate the grass. The next two terms are basically the same as the previous two. Autotroph just means producer. And heterotroph means consumer. Now we're going to take a look at the different types of consumers. Um, the first consumer, these would be the things that eat the producers. And in this case, they're grasshoppers, called the primary consumer. Primary means first. The next one would be the secondary, and then tertiary for third, so, and so on. So, in the case of our drawing here, the secondary consumer is the one that eats the primary, so the frog. And the secondary is eaten by the snake, so we have primary, secondary, and now we have tertiary. If something eats the tertiary, it's called the quaternary consumer, so in this case, it's going to be our hawk. Another way we can split up consumers is by the type of food that they eat. Animals that get their energy from just plants, we call herbivores. So in this diagram, we're only talking about the grasshopper. Organisms that have to eat other organisms, so basically your meat eaters, so to speak, those are your carnivores. And it's not just meat, but it's an easy way to remember it because if a frog eats a grasshopper, grasshopper's not meat, but you get the idea. So herbivores eat the herbs or plants, carnivores eat, well, meat, as we say, but basically other animals. And the last group in this case would be the omnivores. Omnivores eat, well, plants and meat, uh, which would include most humans, but in this case we, uh, we don't have any in this diagram. And that brings us to this idea of a food web instead of a food chain. So to show you the food web, I'm just going to draw a few arrows. So again, we're following the energy. The grasshopper eats the grass. We'll draw the arrow that way. And then frog eats the grasshopper. And snake eats the frog. And the hawk eats the snake. So in this case, we have your producer primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer, and quaternary consumer. But quite often it's not just this linear relationship. A lot of times what we'll end up seeing situations like not only uh, is the grasshopper eaten by the frog, but it's also eaten by the hawk. So if you look at it this way, and it's a little bit weird with this picture because of the way these are arranged, but you get the idea that you have your producer, primary consumer, secondary, tertiary, quaternary, or you could go this route where you have producer, primary, secondary. So that makes the hawk both a secondary and a quaternary consumer, and most things actually do function at more than one trophic level, and that's a new word for us in this tutorial, but trophic level just means energy level or feeding level. So if you're eating meat 
and vegetables, you're occupying a couple of different trophic levels. You're a primary when you're eating vegetables, but you're at least a secondary, if not a tertiary, when you're eating meat. So to go over this in a more complex food web, we're going to look first for the producers, which I'll circle in green. So remember, producers make their own food. We're looking for plants in this case. So carrots, grasses, and grains. Everything else, if it's not a producer, it must be a consumer. So all the animals are consumers. And remember that autotroph and producer are the same thing. And heterotroph and consumer mean the same thing. So in this one, I'm going to start by circling the primary consumers in green. So anything that eats a producer. So we got an arrow here, an arrow here, arrow here to here to here. So you're getting the idea. Just follow the arrows from the producers up. So in this case, let's circle these. I see primary consumer, primary, primary. And yeah, the bird is because it eats the grains right here with that arrow. Secondary consumers. Reds here are things that eat the primaries, so follow the arrow from the primaries. So, yep, we got foxes, owl eats the mouse, and the grasshopper. Um, the bird eats the grasshopper too, so check it out. The bird is both a primary and a secondary consumer. Now, we're going to take a look for tertiary consumers, they're the ones that eat the secondary consumers. So Looking around here at the arrows, I do see a secondary consumer in the bird being eaten by the fox. So in this case, the fox is both a secondary and a tertiary. And I'll just show you that real quick, going from you know, producer to oops, sorry, producer to primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer. Mm. Or you could do producer, primary consumer, secondary consumer. And in our diagram here, we don't have any quaternary consumers, so we don't need to worry about that. Last, let's take a look at the same food web for herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores. So let's take a look and do the, uh, oops, there we go, herbivores in green. So they're the animals that eat the plants only. So we've got rabbits, mice, and grasshoppers. Do not circle that bird quite yet, though, because the bird is also getting energy from eating the grasshoppers. So in that case, that would make it an omnivore. Let's go to carnivores next, though. Carnivores eat only meat or other animals. So for the carnivores, let's circle them in red. And it looks like the fox is getting its energy from the rabbits and the birds. That counts. Owl is feeding only on mice and grasshoppers. That definitely counts. But back here we said that the bird was eating both plants and animals, so that would make the bird our only omnivore. That's pretty much it. And as always, ask questions in class.